Hi, and welcome to DeHungry Hub's On The Road, Episode 2. I'm Adam Freeman, an expat of 15 years, and today we're going to discuss slow travel. So, the question is, what is slow travel? Well, we can tell you what it's not. It's not needing a holiday after your holiday. That's the opposite of what slow travel is. It requires that you take your time, embrace the place, embrace yourself in the place, and also encounter the culture as it should be encountered. Uh, rushing from museum to museum and moving around on a, on a specific itinerary and, or an agenda, while useful and purposeful, is not at the core concept of what slow travel actually is. The best example that I can give, uh, I live in Porto, Portugal, and when people come here, I strongly suggest that the minimum they stay is four to five days. Because the truth is that on the first day in the city, you can see what you want to see, uh, but it's not going to give you a chance to go further afield and to check out areas uh, around the city. It's not gonna give you a chance to take it easy and kind of like feel the real flow and the pulse of the city. So I, for me, Porto four or five days actually is a slower pace. Many people come through for a weekend and they just hustle and bustle right through it, get the feeling but don't really have uh, same kind of deeper experiences. And that's what the whole slow travel movement is actually about, I think. It's about connection, connection and connection. Connection within yourself, connection to the place, connection to the people of the place. And uh, it's much more powerful. It's more of a mindset, more of a, I am considering this to be purposeful travel. For me, I defined my purposeful travel as food-based. So in every place, in every, uh, every area that I go, food is a core component of how I approach that place and it actually opens up more doors for me with uh, the people that I talk to. So how you come up with your own definition for slow travel is completely on your personality but I can tell you that uh, there are a few strategies that I've used. One is a circular route which I'll discuss in more detail at a later time but the other is a hub and spoke system. Here's an example of our last trip to Napoli in 2018 and how we used a hub and spoke system to give ourselves more access, but also to enjoy varying things at a slower pace. So as you can tell from this crude representation, we were able to create a hub and spoke system by staying here in Torre del Greco as our main hub. That allowed us to travel to Naples one day, it allowed us to travel to Caserta a different day. We had access to Vesuvius for evening dinners or whatever it might be, and also other day trips. We were able to do Pompeii very easily, extend out to Salerno on a one-two punch if we really wanted to. And this also gave us the chance to move slowly down to the Amalfi Coast. So we were able to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight destinations during the time we were there, over seven days. So as you can see, we were able to maximize and do it at a reasonable pace. I did not feel rushed. I felt completely at peace. I was happy with where we went. We experienced a lot of things and we met some really cool people along the way. So let's talk about the benefits of slow travel. Number one, in my opinion, reduced stress. There's no need to worry. You're going to get there. And if you're on an itinerary that just has you going tick, 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 checking boxes, going for, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you, you're putting stress on yourself and in a way need more holidays as soon as you get home. The, the second and more important, I think, is the, the deeper connection, as I mentioned before. Connection, connection, connection. And it is. It's connection to yourself. It's connection to the place. It's connection to self in place. That's a little bit meta. So think about that. Um, so. A quick word from my general experience at the, at the end. One, slow travel requires a number um, of instances of observation. Be quiet. Observe the place. There's no need to actually impose a judgment on it just yet. Observe first. And then secondly, commit to nurturing yourself in that space. Right, so the travel that you're there, it, it's purposeful and you decide what you're going to take from it. Now, yeah, there's, this is about a meaningful existence, right? But for those who are interested in the slow travel, I would say that meaning and purpose are part and parcel of how you look at the world. So if it's a meaningless kind of rushing, 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 slow travel may not actually be for you. So 
that's it. Uh, I'm uh, really excited about this topic. I think I'm going to discuss, discuss it more. The hub and spoke system works. We'll talk more about a circular path and other topics that come up along the way. But until that time, take care of yourself and be well.